VI began with the birth of Unix at AT&T. It was developed as a screen-oriented editor for teletype machines. That illustrates how far back in computer history it is rooted. Vim is a cousin, a later enhancement to the original VI. Today, the two terms are used interchangeably. So, why should you learn Vim? Well, it is available everywhere. Whenever you find yourself logged into a Linux server and your favorite editor is not installed, or you're using a purely command line connection, you can count on Vim as a handy editor. Although less than approachable with its terse and arcane commands, once you've become familiar with Vim, you can be extremely proficient at any editing task, source code, configuration files, to-do lists. Knowledge and expertise with Vim is a sign of geek credibility, like being a Git expert or that guy who can devise the perfect regular expression for any occasion. If you know your way around Vim, your peers will take notice. VI, the predecessor to Vim, was developed in a time before the existence of the mouse. You may argue that makes it antiquated and useless. However, since writing software is all about writing text files filled with English words, the mouse is actually a very inefficient tool for software development. Once you've mastered the essentials of Vim, your ability to write, edit, open, and close text files increases in an almost exponential way. After this short video, you should be comfortable with Vim and, perhaps, be inspired to continue and learn more. I encourage you to not simply watch, but follow along. You can open Vim easily from the command line of a Linux computer. I'm using Nitrous here, which offers me access to a Linux machine from anywhere, regardless of the hardware I connect with. Check out this video on Learnable for a bit more detail on Nitrous. The key to Vim is a simple formula of keystrokes. There are operators and there are motions. Many of the operator motion combinations can be implemented multiple times by preceding them with a number. For example, I can jump to the next word in a line by simply pressing the W key. W is for word. Pressing the E jumps to the end of the word. But if I need to skip ahead three words, I can precede this with the number three. So 3W jumps to the beginning of the third word ahead. Likewise, B is for back and pressing 4B takes me back four words. Dollar jumps right to the end of the line. You can quickly scroll through a document by remembering U for up and D for down. Use the control key in combination with these and you will jump half a screen at a time. If you need to replace text, just press R and start typing. This is where I should point out that Vim has several modes. When actually writing text, you are in the edit mode. You can return to the command mode, which allows us this navigation we have seen, by pressing the escape key. Here are a few more handy keystrokes you should practice. I for insert, A to append, D to delete, but D must be followed by a modifier. You already know some of these modifiers. W for the entire word, E to the end of the word, B to the beginning of the word, and dollar sign to the end of the line. D, D will delete the entire line regardless of your cursor position. Once you grasp the pattern of operation and have a few mnemonics well situated in your brain, Vim is less daunting and can become quite useful. Oh, and as you're working along, if you ever make a mistake, just press U for undo. The last thing you typed will be undone. Or a capital U using shift will restore the entire line to its original state. For some help with the mnemonics part, here's an article on RubySource with some of my favorite memory tricks. But this is all really just a hint of the powerful capability Vim can offer. Vim has all the text editor functions you would expect, like search and replace and bookmarks, 
The editor can do some smart evaluation of the text, identifying words, paragraphs, lines, and even helping to match up braces, a problem that plagues me quite often when writing code. It can perform search and replace using regular expression syntax and has the ability to repeat common operations easily or sophisticated ones with macros. I have a challenge to offer you. There is a little known jewel in most Linux distributions. At a command line on any Linux instance to which you have access, type vimtutor. This brings you to a very simple but interactive guide on the basics of vim. I have intentionally omitted some of the basics it includes in this discussion in order to offer this challenge. Go through the Vim Tutor every day for one week. Do the entire set of lessons even though they will soon become repetitive. We learn best by repetition. After one week you will either be encouraged to continue improving your skills with Vim or give up completely. Share your successes and impressions in the comments below. Thank you for watching.